Hello, I'm Richard Raffin. Uh, in this video you're going to see uh, a couple of bowls, the first of which was a bit of a disaster. Um, I set out to make a box elder bowl but it had a big split in it and rather than fill the split uh, just better to abort the whole thing. And in the end um, I made, you'll see me make this little uh, pear bowl which is a kind of breakfast cereal bowl um, which um, came out very nicely. This is a box elder blank which I roughed out a couple of weeks ago and uh, it's beginning to split. It's, it's already moved. I've had it on the lathe once but you'll see and I've, I've marked a little spot somewhere here so I can get it back on the on the chuck properly. Um, but its main problems are there's a split just here which you might not be able to see that well you probably can't see the whole lot of it but there's a big bit just there uh, i've got a knot at the top which i started turning when a knot was a knot and not a part of a work of art uh, so that's going to come out and working round there's another more of the pith the other side so that's going to come out uh, on the inside there's another knot which I'll probably be able to take care of um, with uh, epoxy or something but looking at that it goes through and comes out here which means it's who knows what it might do in there anyway um, so getting this back on the lathe where it was where was my mark just there and I've got a little arrow and it's supposed to go by the EXT can you tell us a bit more about those marks um, for putting it back on the... Oh, for, yes, well, for the mark, I've, I've just... Uh, um, in fact, I've lost my marks now. I don't know why I had the chuck where I did. Um, I've, I've got uh, just a little EXT on the chuck, and I've got an EXT there, and a little arrow which indicated that that's pretty well where it goes. And so I'll just tighten that up. Now, coming around to the front... Whoops! Uh, there's a little hazard. Um, the rest is trapped underneath the bowl. <laughs> so that's got to come out and that's got to go back. There we are. Right, so I'm just pressing it right into the chuck. And then when I come around the front, I've <coughs> already had a little trial run here. There are some lines there. So I've got the just want to see whoops what is possible here and I think there is a bowl in there uh, not going to be that comfortable uh, when it gets thin but anyway we'll see what happens um, so the first thing to do is really to take off the, the 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 pith the defects of the pith so I've got a line there and we'll start it nice and slowly you always need to get into the habit of uh, slowing your of uh, on the variable speeds of putting them back to zero when you first start a new job um, and then uh, you wind the speed up uh, to what seems safe so this one will be running probably around 1200 or so there's a 3 8 uh, deep fluted bowl gouge this my hands planted on the rest so I can just push the tool forward from that point now considering this tree was growing a month or so ago oh, about six weeks ago it's not much moisture coming off so it's uh, the it's drying out really quite quickly. Now there's a little bit more to go here. Um, we've got that finger sticking forward really so the shavings get deflected out of my face. Now we start to see this is looking much more like a, a bowl prospect now so try and find the inside Oops, the inner edge there. Right, so get a bowl somewhere there and then out on the outside. Right, so there's 
quite a decent bit of thickness there, about 20 mil, three quarters of an inch. Um, I'm just going to true up the inside and put a little shoulder so I can expand the chuck into the uh, into that space. Now, this is just a little three quarter inch uh, square end scraper. I'm just going to. And I'll put in several possible um, places for the jaws to expand into. Um, I can see this chuck is not going to reach that far, so we'll get that off. Just change the chucks over. It's very nice if you don't have to change chuck jaws. Uh, so this is now this is a VM120 chuck. Uh, the other one was a VM100. This is a little bit much larger chuck, and this these jaws will fit into this shoulder, or one of them anyway. So I just kind of hang hang it on the top of the chuck and feel when it's seated, and then tighten it up. And my main idea is to get to the stage where the um, where the bowls held from the inside and I can work the whole of the outside. Now next thing is going to be to get rid of the defect which is there and it runs up to this point and it's down to there. So uh, it's very easy to lose track of it so I'll just mark where that bit is and we'll put another line on the base and any other splits uh, don't seem to be. So I just want to get rid of that split and I'm going to do that uh, just with a shear cut because it'll give me a much cleaner surface. So I'm trying to want to have the bevel riding here. So it's the three, three eighths deep bowl gouge again. So it tools pretty well on its side. So look for the arrow. Uh, that's bad news. That's getting worse. So I'm beginning to wonder if I'm going to get a bowl out of this. So I'm going to take a much wider cut this time. I must be getting fairly thin in there now. So where's my arrow? Still there. not looking hopeful. That is still there so I think probably with this bowl it's going to be more use as a chuck. I'll just measure its wall thickness and we'll see. I never see any point in in uh, making a bowl with a great split up. It doesn't matter how much epox you put in there, it always looks like a split bowl. So I've got oh, probably yes enough to persevere at the moment. Uh, another another three quarters of an inch of wood to go. So we'll just see what happens. So, and doesn't hasn't retreated at all this split so you can imagine it's just straight up in there now I need I know how much material I've got I really can't go down I'll have that as a kind of uh, datum line and go down from that about half an inch so that's just using the wing of the tool and nudging the end of the handle around with my hip. Um, no, I, it's still there. So I'm just going to abort that bowl and uh, we'll do another one. Right, so we'll cut that and I'll go, we'll cut the 
cut the video there for the moment and I'll go and find another bowl. You mentioned turning that into a jam chuck? Uh, I did, yes. Well, at the moment, um, if I've got a bowl which uh, I need to jam up, I can still, I've still got enough material there to make a, um, uh, to, I can size that down and jam a bowl over the top of it. Uh, so so they're, they're not all together wasted, those kinds of things. I suppose I could even take that right off and I've got some kind of a picture frame in there, but you know, it's just a bit of wood. Um, we do have other bits of wood, so uh, no point in spending hours making something which is going to be second rate anyway. So I'm going to do a smaller one. Um, So I've got this little bit of now a uh, piece of pear and that also has moved quite a bit by the look of it. I'll just see by how much. So that's uh, 165 to 170, only 5 mil, so that's not a huge amount. But um, what I want to do first is true this up since I've got this chuck there. It almost just. Uh, up the base. Oh yeah, All right. Very convenient. Just get a, a foot on this so I can put it into another chuck. So this is the half-inch spindle guard. Whoa! And like the sound of that, just rattling a little bit. So do this on a smaller chuck. So I'll use the step jaws. This is the VM100. Right, this time that can old foot can just go, no it doesn't want to. We we'll say you can't have too many chucks. I only have half the number I used to. So this is another set of sharp jaws. It's a little bit bigger. Uh, so it was meant for this bowl in the first place. So what I need inside still is a little shoulder so I can reverse the um, bowl onto the chuck. Same procedure, I'm going to screw up the outside, get a shoulder on the inside for the chuck jaws, get my calipers out of the way. So that will now go onto there. Right, and that's, now I've got the whole of the outside uh, exposed. I can true this up and then uh, work out what to do with what I've got. So it's just to need a little kind of skim up, I'm going to use just off the nose of the half inch spindle gouge. Me just dragging it up the side. And using the right wing just over on the edge, take that little sharp corner off the end. And uh, that's pretty well, uh, a little bit more there. Truing up the bottom, that's pretty well flat anyway. I'm going to use the left wing, tools right over on its side. And then roll it over for a shear cut back to the middle. True the foot up. And then on its side in the corner and then just drag the tool back and that gives me a little corner so if I want to reverse or when I reverse it again the chuck will sit right into the corner. Now I'm beginning to think about size and I've got a number of calipers up here which have been set for the various chucks and I think I've got every 
set of calipers except the one I want which is the chuck which is on there or is that it? No that's it. So that's only just going to be the right size for that chuck and there's just it, it is true that's I think I'll get away with that but I'll put another bead in which I could catch uh, if I wanted to. So. So I'm just going to true this up now, or make a shear cut with this, so again using the 3 8 bowl gouge. And this is a deep fluted gouge so I can have the flute pretty well up and be cutting with the inside wing. Put the bevel riding. Oops, got the wrong trajectory going out into space. That's really nice smooth surface just there, so... Going slightly deeper. And to keep the movements flowing, so start a little bit further back again. I had to go into space again, just having a little difficulty picking that shaving up. Should get all the way this time. I'm just transferring the weight off my back foot onto the left so that, oops, a little bit of knocking at the end there which means I just didn't get that last little bit and I'm going to do that rather than do another long cut with the um, with the gouge I'm going to use a shear scraper uh, up on its edge so I'm going to be actually shear scraping with it move the rest along so my palms on the uh, on the rest and then I can just squeeze the tool in. just using the lower part of the edge and you should be able to see where the dust is it still doesn't feel quite as good as it could for a... Um, I'm just going to hone that I hope you can see. This pair works, just works beautifully. It's um, really seems a pity to sand. And coming around the bottom here. Um, I'm going to just have a little curve and the easiest way to do that is with the uh, with the scraper with this wood just gently scrapers really it's a very heavy word you know you're not scraping paint off a door you're just gently stroking the surface to get these little wispy shavings off or you can do it with a, a 3 8 bowl gouge need to take a bit more off so I'm going to roll that on its side at the top of the foot uh, I've lost the curve here now so uh, I need to do that up which I could if you don't have a shear scraper you can use the side of a gouge so um, that's as a shear scraper this is what I always used to do not realizing it was actually shear scraping it just seemed to work coming across the bottom I'm going to use the, uh, the scraper just going to shade hard there that little vibration and just use the, the we've got a little sharp corner there on the left so that I can just ease that in gives me a bit of a rebate a bit of decoration and don't really like the look of that so um, I'm going to take this foot off later so what I'll do is just float 
the pencil into the middle leaving a little white dot and that is dead center and uh, that will help me line the bowl up later so I can turn this round and um, hollow it oh, could have been a bit smaller that foot in which case we'll just try it and see what it looks like <laughs> I thought I was way too small for the chucks and or pushing the bands of the chuck anyway. So I've, I've got a little bit to play with. So 3 8 spindle gouge. I'd really like a slightly smaller foot. I'm going to take the whole thing down a bit more. I'm rather wishing I hadn't put that little rebate in where I did. So that's gone. I know that I can grip with the chuck in there. I'd like a slightly smaller foot. So I'm going to put a little curved one on it, like that. With an overhead camera, you'll see that it's beginning to look a bit kind of heavy around here. So I'm just going to take a fair amount of that away. This is the half inch spindle gouge again. On its side to start with, and just open the gouge up a bit and just pull it back. smooth that up with the uh, with the scraper now the rest goes down very slightly um, so that the the tool isn't sticking up into the oncoming wood right being very picky now I can feel there's a kind of lump there so that's got to come down again Or maybe it's more of a lump up here. We'll just take that away. Go flat. And I'm watching what's happening up on the, the top horizon up here. So what I have now is a little roll in there where the chuck jaws will fit and I'm going to use the left wing of the tool just almost like a, a shear scraper just going to squeeze it in and so there's a fine bit of dust off the edge and that just raise that uh, that just should give me a really nice clean surface in there and I've got um, a 3 8 spindle gouge here in my hand so I'll just cut a little bit of detail with that there so that's ease the tool into the wood and then come in from the other side right now this will be the outside so I can just sand all that so 180 grit bit of a kind of pick up mark there so get in with that with a bit more effort okay that's all gone I'm beginning to think it'd be nice to have a little bit of decoration here so just um, stick a bead in there 
Now this is where the, the tool is just going to go round in a circle, the, the handle will go round in a circle. So the, uh, where do I want it? About there. It goes into the wood and I move the tool very slightly along the rest, roll it at clockwise as I come out and then keep it at that angle as I go back in and then finally right on its side again. If you roll the tool too far at that side it'll skid up um, and you'll have a, have a, a nasty spiral catch mark. I'm just going to stroke the top just around that bead a little bit. Now back to sanding. Now there's a bit of the blue 240 grit. on the lathe head and pull your pull the sanding of the hand holding the paper into the wood uh, puts makes it the whole job much easier than just standing there uh, which twists your lower spine and lower back right that should be fine yep So with this one, um, I'll put a bit of oil on first. This is, uh, I've got, I use boiled linseed oil for almost everything. Um, used to, wouldn't mind using nut oil. People are allergic to nuts, which is a bit of a problem. But um, basically just get that on. This is beeswax, I want to build up a sticky layer. Now my finishes don't stay bright and shiny forever. Um, they, I like things to be used so it's designed to uh, provide a base. So if you want to polish it and make this bowl look like an antique you do that with some kind of furniture polish or beeswax polish something like that or if you're going to use it you just wash it up treat it like a wooden breadboard which um, same material and it'll take the same abuse and uh, we find now that's going to be just going straight into that chuck and with these jaws they're really nice crisp dovetail. They don't, a lot of chucks have a little chamfer on and with those you can't do this um, without marking the wood. With this that'll just sit nicely in there and if it's slightly smaller these are made as a true diameter then cut. Um, if you're slightly smaller than the di that diameter then the bearing surface is up in the middle of the jaw and if you tuck that into a corner, it's extremely difficult to see any bruising if you know what you look even if you uh, know what you're looking for. Right, so that's that bit and now just hollow it out. Which um, do this with a uh, again, three eighths bowl gouge. So it's not a particularly large bowl. I need to move the light slightly so I've got some inside. Now, this often happens, if your rest is too low, the end of the handle is on the bed. All you have to do is raise the rest, and then the, the handle's at a different angle. Tool's in on its side. Once you've got somewhere for the bevel to ride, and I like to bring my fingers around the back, thumbs there as a kind of lateral fulcrum on the rest.
There's a less pressure you can put against the wood, the better, because that's what leads to the chatter. And so any pressure you're putting in with the tool against the wood you need to kind of equalise with your fingers, that's the idea. And uh, that doesn't feel too bad all the way around there. I like to go around uh, kind of two thirds of the way with um, uh, with the gouge and then at this point I could transfer to the heavier gouge here. So this is a, this is a uh, half inch um, bowl gouge. It's got an asymmetric grind with a fairly steep right wing which allows me to keep the bevel riding all the way around into the middle but I don't feel as if I have as much control over the shape as I do with a scraper so, um, so I'm going to come off this bend it's still a little bit thick in there so okay we've shifted the camera a bit um, now I've got to come off this bend during the gap I just was feeling this just a little bit thicker there so I'm going to come back with the gouge to start with So the, the edge on the scraper is like to have a radius which is just slightly tighter than what I'm trying to cut. So in this state I can come off the bend and just use that. Keep the cut over on the on the right wing. Don't use the whole of this edge at once because the, the wood won't like it. Just too much tool on the wood at one time. Now coming across the bottom I actually have a, a bigger tool which uh, is my more favorite bowl scraper. This is uh, was a 35 mil wide and uh, it's uh, three thick so it's, there's not much it's not going to bounce and when I was still in production I would not be using a tool this long I'd have a shorter one um, an older one just feel a little bump up there There's a bit of snicking going on with the sound I don't know what that is we'll have a look in a second and let's get that round into the bottom there's a little lump just dead center so you just need to come up from underneath that's all it takes to get rid of that And I forgot to do the rim, which uh, normally I do that uh, almost automatically. Just I like it tilted one way or the other, and I think slightly out generally feels a bit better. So I'm going to use the the left wing of the nose and just little kind of arcing cuts coming across, trying not to put any pressure against the wood that invites a catch. Right, so that feels. Pretty good. Yep, it'll be fine. So, sand that, and I'm going to do that with uh, with power. In this case, um, use a um, an angle drill and the why is it they never fit when you want them to? Right. Um, so I'm going to start off with. Um, We'll try the 180 and if that doesn't work just go straight back to the 120. Now, the nice thing with this tool is it does actually do some, sh it helps you if there are any little bumps that'll take them out.
even five seconds, or there probably wasn't five seconds, that will tell you if you need to go back. No, that's right. So that was 180 grit, and uh, this should be 240, can't see a number on it. See that when you've um, when you've got a good surface, finishing really doesn't take too long, especially if you've got some power tools to do it. And the thing with the angle drill is it only runs at about uh, I think it's 1800 RPM somewhere around there, so it's not like an angle grinder, which uh, you could possibly do it with that too, but. It, it's much more difficult to control. So that's that. That's a, another little useful or utilitarian bowl. I noticed with your finish there, you put wax on first. Uh, did on I? The inside, just on the inside. Ah, right. Uh, that, <laughs> I'm pretty. I, I am pretty <laughs> casual about finishing. <laughs> Um, I was just thinking it, about the utilitarian yeah. nature of the bowl, that could be why. Yes, um, well it's just being casual too possibly, but the, um, uh, um, there are a few little kind of marks in there, but if it's going to be used in any any kind of, even the, the, the kind of, yes, if I look very carefully, there are little sanding marks from... Um, from the 240 grit uh, and it would be the same if I went down to uh, finer grits 400 or so or even finer um, but uh, no I think that's fine you know we tend to get far too precious with these things but that's a really that's quite a nice little bowl that one <laughs>